let's dive right away into what is synthetic data. So I would say there are different types of synthetic data or people call different things synthetic data. So for example, random data is one form of synthetic data. It's not super smart, but it has its place. Imagine the software testing use case. As long as the shape is correct, in this case, it's the 300 pixels by 400 pixels, you can use such kind of data for, for example, smoke tests um, or throughput and load tests. However, if you want to have a bit smarter data, imagine you want to have some faces in the end that you would like um, to use, synthetic faces, then you need to amp up your game. So what you can do is you can create your data um, on, your, on your own. So you can draw the faces manually. You can have self-generated synthetic data. The quality is already heavily improved. However, it's, it's still not really smart. Still, also self-generated data has its place. Again, think of software testing where um, edge cases could be covered like this, right? You create your own edge cases that you want to test. The problem with this approach is that it doesn't scale, right? It's really very hard for us manually to draw a uh, hundred thousand different faces. That's simply impossible. And another aspect that you should consider is the fact that the, the diversity in the data is also very limited when you do that. Next up would be what I call model generated data or rule based synthetic data. So the idea here is that the model, for example, could consist of uh, let's say a distribution of 300 different faces, 50 different eye colors or eye shapes, uh, 60 different heads, 40 different mustaches, and so on and so forth. The model could then randomly combine all those heads and eyes and faces and stuff to create a population of different faces. When you think of tabular synthetic data, you could think of, oh, age is distributed, distributed like a Gaussian. And the, the, let's say, buying behavior of my customers is related to the age in this and that way. So once you have established that, again, your model could do random draws from these distributions and you would get a population. So also that is fine. However, the problem with these approaches is that you only get what you put in, right? You know the rules already in advance and the model will just tell you what you already know. It's super scalable, right? It's, it's pretty fast. Another problem is, however, that it requires a lot of manual work and it requires the work of experts because people need to know how the age is distributed and how, um, let's say, the buying behavior depends on it, right? So that there's a lot of work involved. And the last stage of synthetic data is what I would call data-based or AI-generated data. And that is exactly what we do, right? Our system trains on original data and extracts patterns, correlations, and distributions so that it can, in the inference phase, simply make random draws from it and generate a population that, in case of the photos, is just you know photorealistic and it's super hard for, for people like you and me to actually discern whether or not this picture is real or not. So summarizing what synthetic data is for me, especially for the rest of that talk, synthetic data is when you have an AI system that trains on original data to extract correlations, patterns, distributions, which are then in the inference phase used to create a synthetic, photorealistic population.